reinforcement learning is a subset of machine learning, neural nets. How do you define it? Yeah, so that helps to first explain what supervised learning is. And then I'll talk about reinforcement learning as a modification of supervised learning. Because that's really what it is. Okay. You can think of it as semi-supervised learning. In fact. There's also an area in machine learning called unsupervised learning, which isn't relevant here at all. So I just wanted to mention it for completeness. Is there, uh, as these are roughly the three types of learning that are listed in most textbooks on machine learning. Again, these are unsupervised, supervised, and supervised learning. Uh, and and semi-supervised semi or reinforcement learning, sorry. AI, to remind our audience, is the field of study and practice relevant to any machine behavior that is intelligent, including learning, but not exclusive to. So AI is a study and practice around a set of smart or intelligent behavior ascribable uh, to machines, of which machine learning is just a subset. What other things you might ask before uh, belong to AI other than learning? Because this is not often discussed. You know? For example, there are things like deducing something by means of logic. Uh, I don't know if you've seen pr uh, theorem, prov uh, uh, theorem uh, provers. You know, there's a sort of algorithms that can solve a mathematical pr uh, theorem, for example. And, and this, this logical ability, this, this may be learned or it may not be learned. So there might not be any machine learning involved in this at all. But if you can solve a mathematical theorem, there, there is something intelligent about it. And, and in fact, uh, Noam Chomsky was fa has famously argued that some of our own intelligence, our own human intelligence that is relevant to language, must be hard-coded before we can even start learning language. So there might be some things about intelligence that is not learned at all. It's just hard-coded. So here, I only talk about machine learning. So, so we're restricting ourselves here. You know, because reinforcement learning is part of machine learning. And, and so we're, we're talking about um, reinforcement learning, and that is one of, of three types of machine learning. Um, reinforcement learning doesn't include in its definition how it is implemented exactly. So we, you know, it could be done with neural networks or other ways. The only thing that is required for reinforcement learning is that there is an agent in some environment which learns from a reward and cost mechanism, roughly based on behavior. The environment can be minimal, it can be rather complex. It, it learns a policy by trial and error, but how exactly learning is implemented is not prescribed in its definition. Neural networks are one way to implement reinforcement In fact, probably the most common way now. As they originally were built for supervised learning algorithms, and they can be ported into this new form of learning, let's begin to talk about neural networks after I, I introduce supervised learning. I have to begin with a bit of terminology. Supervised learning is used to, lay, uh, to learn a label from a set of features. A label can be a string denoting one of many classes that an object belongs to, such as the word cat or the word monkey. And the corresponding features would be the data that is used to distinguish between the classes. So for example, the features might be the ordered pixels in a picture of a cat, and the corresponding label is the word cat. A label could also be a continuous quantity uh, that is to be predicted, such as the unemployment rate next month. And, and there, the features would be the various variables that can be used for the prediction, such as the current and last period interest rate and the price of labor, etc. The supervised learning test then, in the first case, for the algorithm to learn how to take in ordered pixels in a picture and output corresponding labels that describe what's in the picture, such as bird, monkey, or horse, or person. In the second case, it is to learn how to take in current and past facts, such as the interest rate, the wages of various professionals, and to predict the future employment rate, for example. This is done in general by fitting some model from the combination of features and labels in a small data set known as training set. In, in other words, the model knows the right answers for all of the elements in this data set, and it learns to figure out how the features can be used to predict the known labels. The trained model is then tested on another set of examples for which we also know the right answers, known as the, the test set. We withhold the answers from the model and ask it to tell us its predictions. We can then compare the model's predictions with the correct answers that we know. There are many variations on, of this approach. One way to solve these problems 
is to use one or the other neural network as a model. Or we could use some other rather completely different algorithm, such as boosted trees, which sometimes outperform neural networks in practice on such tests as a second one, a prediction test of a quantity from other quantities. Neural networks, especially convolution and neural networks, do really well on vision tests. But others, for example, recurrent neural networks, do better on sequence prediction. Autoregression and, and also natural language prediction, translation, summarization tests, also done with uh, you know, recurrent neural nets of some sort. As an aside, the newest and most powerful such sequence prediction uh, neural networks is called a transformer which has some major advantages over previous approaches. Since it's not the goal here to talk in detail about neural networks and how they work, I will have to, uh, have to uh, leave that to another session. Here I want to next demonstrate uh, to you how supervised learning is insufficient for some task and why we need something beyond that. I've already alluded to that earlier when I talked about the chess game. If you teach an algorithm, remember, to predict your own behavior in a chess game, then the algorithm can asymptotically learn how to play like you. But you can do this in a supervised way where the label is every next move you take, given all the past notes. Uh, and the features are all the past actions and the constellation, in fact, that you're in at the moment in the chess game. And then, however, if you're solving this problem, of getting an algorithm to outperform a human on some task, for example, playing chess or go, it wouldn't be sufficient to learn from the, be uh, from the behavior of a human player, even the best player. As learning to imitate a player would preclude the algorithm from ever outperforming that player. Imitation isn't, if you think about it, imitation is actually not that intelligent in a way. I think that this is, this is an intuitive thing that's made a little bit more, you know, that it's made more concrete here in this case. That's, so, so, so then reinforcement learning comes in where the algorithm learns from a reward mechanism, that is to say it learns how to beat you by predicting the moves that would surprise you and that would lead you to lose. Where, you, where your loss and the algorithm's win is the new label, if you will, that is to be predicted from the features, which include the algorithm's potentially novel behavior as well as opponent's reactions. Previous approaches work well when the target or the label that is to be predicted is static. Reinforcement learning comes in when the target is a moving one. Interestingly, you can, you can use the same types of algorithms that were used to, uh, for supervised learning in order to learn a static label, um, to also to learn this moving target. So yes, yeah. therefore you can, you can learn, uh, use neural networks as part of your solution you could also use some completely different approaches, such as gradient boosted trees, as I said before. The important difference to remember between reinforcement learning and supervised learning is that you learn to predict rewards from your own actions in some environment instead of just static labels in a supervised uh, learning environment.